You're watching News 4 Midday. In just a matter of days, a swine flu vaccine could arrive in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. We know that many of you have questions about the virus and the vaccine. So this morning, we're joined by Dr. Thomas Gator. Welcome back. We had him with us this morning. had lots of questions. He's the medical director for Howard University Hospital. So you can email your questions, too, to today at NBCWashington.com. They've been pouring in all morning long, and we've got a few for you right now to right. tackle. And here's one from one of our viewers. When you get the shot, are you immediately protected or or does it take time to take effect? It does take a little time to take, to take effect because one's body has to build up immunity and this is why the injection is given in the first place. So if you get the shot at 5 p.m. at uh, 5.05, you're not protected. But about how soon will it be effective? Uh, generally it takes weeks. Oh, okay. to build up the immune system uh, for the antigen that's given. So we are entering the flu season now. Yes, we By are. the time it's really here in full strength, uh, you should be protected should if you get it. Should be protected and covered. Okay, as soon as it uh, is here next yes. week. Here's another question for you. I've heard that after the flu shot, you can have flu-like symptoms for a while. Is that true or did I just ask you that? No, I didn't ask you that. Is well, that true? It, it is uh, partly true. One can have a variety of mild symptoms, including uh, flu-like symptoms, a little soreness at the site of, of the inoculation. But by and large, these um, risks of these mild infections um, do not outweigh the benefits, which are great. Okay, we have another one for you. One viewer asks, the H1N1 vaccine is recommended for pregnant women. Can you tell me any adverse side effects to a woman and her unborn child at approximately five months into the pregnancy? It is absolutely recommended for women who are pregnant. We have found that uh, in clinical trials that women who are pregnant are six times more apt to have serious uh, complications from H1N1. So this is why they've been moved to the head of the pack, so to yes. speak. They as are far on as the priority they're list. They're on the priority list. And so with the clinical trials that have been done, we found that the vaccine has been quite safe. The other advantage of this is that once the mom is vaccinated, um, the uh, fetus or infant can also get immunity from the mom. So it's almost two for one there. So recommended. It is recommended. Okay, we have another one from another viewer. What about people who have diabetes? Should we wait until the shot gets here, or is it okay to get the nasal spray? So they're asking, is it better to uh, to wait for the shot, or can they have the nasal spray? Well, there, there are other things that go along with this, including age, that uh, one needs to look at. So I can't as answer this specifically. Uh, the patient does have an underlying condition, so I think you need to see one's doctor to make that complete decision, uh, doctor and patient together. Okay. And again, you can send us your swine flu questions. A doctor is going to stay here in the house with us for a while. Just email today at NBCWashington.com. Or you can post your question on Twitter or Facebook. Just search News for Today. And the doctor is going to be here until 1135 this morning. So uh, let's hear your questions. Thank you so much, Thank Dr. You. Gator, for being here. Thank you. Joe? Well, we know that a lot of you have questions about the swine flu and the vaccine. And so we're trying to answer them today. We're joined by Dr. Thomas Gator, the medical director of Howard University Hospital. Thanks very much again for joining us, Doctor. Good to have you with us. Email your questions to today at NBCWashington.com. Let's uh, hear what people are asking. One viewer wrote in to say, I've heard many parents are afraid to vaccinate their children because of the possible side effects. What are the known side effects of the vaccine? Well, the side effects um, are mild, generally. Most uh, individuals who receive the vaccine will have no side effects or just some mild side effects and those are really local at the site may maybe a little redness a little tenderness a little swelling at the site may have a little headache or or a low grade temperature and this usually passes within about uh, one to two days very rare there are some life-threatening situations that could uh, occur but it's extremely rare and if one has had any allergies to eggs or anything like that they should uh, refrain from taking it and speak to their physician about taking the H1N1 foods. And it's allergies specifically to eggs it's not seasonal allergies or that sort of thing? No, you, you, generally it's to eggs okay. uh, that's one. Some may have allergies to the preservative that's associated with the vaccine so that's why I said you should talk to your 
physician and be sure about this. Okay, another viewer told us that she asked her pediatrician about getting her two-year-old vaccinated. The doctor's office said it wasn't sure it was uh, slotted to get any shipments. And she asked, is there an anticipated shortage of the vaccine even for young children? We don't anticipate a shortage for, for the vaccine at all. Uh, if one uh, is worried about uh, where to find the places which will be provided the vaccine, you can always contact your local health department. They'll be able to give you that information as to the registered sites. Okay, the viewer also wanted to know where else can I go to get the swine flu vaccine for my daughter if the pediatrician's office does not have it? That's that health department uh, at your local jurisdiction. They'll be able to help you. Okay, and another viewer asked, how much should I pay for the vaccine? Well, this one is supported by the federal government. So this vaccine, uh, we do not have to pay anything for this one. Unlike the seasonal flu, you'll pay your nominal uh, rate for it. But for this vaccine, it is free. Okay, now this one touches on something you touched on already. In this question, this viewer said, if someone is allergic to the preservatives used in the flu vaccine, what options do they have? Well, it, it, you, you have to speak to your physician because uh, we don't know necessarily which preservative they are allergic to. But one that has come up time and time again is something called thermerosol, which is a mercury type metal that uh, is used as a preservative in the vaccine. In the H1N1, there is a vaccine which is free of thermerosol. So that should not be an issue. And just as effective. Absolutely effective. Dr. Thomas Gator, thanks so much for being here to answer our questions today. It's thank been uh, very good to have you here, and we want to thank everyone who wrote in to ask questions. We had a, have a tremendous response all morning long. We tried to get to as many of your emails as we could, but thank you very much for uh, sending in your questions. And, Doctor, thank you again. Thank you as well. Barbara?